Life like a wayfarer journeying Like a stranger on his way back home Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh نحمده ونصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم محمد رسول الله والذين معه وشداء على الكفار رحماء بينهم تراهم ركعا سجدا يبتغون فضلا من الله ورضوانا سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم my dear brothers and elders, honorable ulama, we begin in the name of Allah and we thank Him and glorify Him, especially for the fact that Allah blessed us and made us in the ummah of His beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا Verily, surely Allah blessed the believers and did them an immense favor by raising His beloved Prophet amongst them. When we see there have been a lot of great people throughout the history of humanity. There have been many a great prophets, but it is our aqidah as Muslims than Alu Sunnah wal Jama'ah. There was no greater man, there was no greater prophet than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Great people are known for the great things that they do, for the great work they have done, for what they have achieved. And when we see what did Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam come to this world to do? Did he come to build buildings? build cars, build roads, populate towns and cities. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent by Allah to prepare a jama'ah, to, pre to prepare a group of people, a group of people who will be a model for humanity to come till the day of Qiyamah. وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُحَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنْسَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُمْ those people who then had the good fortune to see the beloved Prophet of Allah with their own eyes and to see Rasulullah once to receive Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his noble face. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا تمسوا النار من رآني أو رآ من رآني He who has seen me or seen someone who has seen me, the fire of Jahannam will never touch them. Those people who used to see Rasulullah day and night, sit with them in the morning and in the evening and rather they didn't used to sit with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah commanded his beloved prophet to sit with them allah says in surah al-kahf something we should recite on weekly basis at least every friday it's our misfortune that we are Indian Pakistanis and we don't understand and speak Arabic but those who do and and they try to read some translations or sit in the company of ulama and understand the Quran Allah says to his beloved Prophet Wasbir nafsaka ma'alladheena yad'oona rabbahum bil ghadati wal ashi Oh my beloved Prophet sit with the people Ya Allah why? Allah says because they are so dear to me they have their hearts are so pure yuriduna wajha they have no other desire, no other ambition. They are loyal to me and they seek my pleasure. And another verse Allah says, وَخْفِذْ جَنَاحَكَ لِمَنِ اتَّبَعَكَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Oh my beloved Prophet, make yourself humble in their presence. Look at them when they are with you. وَلَا تَعْدُ عَيْنَاكَ عَنْهُمْ Don't even look away. When they are with you, look at them, sit with them, make yourself humble in their presence and pray for them. If they are with you and they, they are human, they've got other needs and desires. If they need to go somewhere and they seek your permission when they are sitting with you and they need to tend to their family affairs or personal affairs. And when they seek permission to go anywhere, give them permission. And if they go, don't feel bad about them. And then seek my forgiveness for them. Allah is commanding His beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to keep praying for them. Be kind to them. Overlook their weaknesses. For they are your students. And they are your students. And I personally, Allah says, I have 
I have tested them. I have looked into their hearts and seen their hearts to be full of piety, sincerity and taqwa. Doesn't matter what other people will say. 1400 years down the line, but Allah says, I Allah. Promise them forgiveness and immense reward. Just as Allah spoke about his beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in front of Musa السلام, in front of Isa السلام, Allah mentioned the companions of Muhammad وسلم, to Musa السلام, to Isa السلام, hence the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians did not only use to recognize Rasulullah they used to recognize Rasulullah like they recognize their own children but not just Rasulullah they would recognize they knew this is Abu Bakr they knew this is Umar they knew this is Usman and this is Ali radiyallahu ta'ala anhu when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa came and he made effort, he prepared such people, even Allah was proud of them. Allah sent salam, ask Abu Bakr, is he happy with me? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, I know a man, his name, the name of his father, when he will come. We all want to go to Jannah. We long to be in Jannah, but Jannah longs to wait for them. But Jannah is anxious for the moment when Abu Bakr will come by and Jannah will welcome him with all its doors open. When Umar radiallahu ta'ala embraced Islam, uh, look at him, who Umar? And the Prophet, when Umar radiallahu embraced Islam, Jibreel came, Ya Rasulullah, are you happy Umar has become a Muslim? He has accepted Islam and he's coming to your service. The Prophet said, I am very happy. Jibreel said, Ya Rasulullah, not only are you happy, all the angels are happy as well. The Prophet said, I swear by him who holds my life in his hands. The Prophet said to us, Umar, oh, Umar, when you walk a path, even Shaitan leaves that path. Shaitan is afraid of you. He is scared to be in the path when he sees you coming. And the Prophet وسلم, prepared such people. The Prophet said, why should I not be modest? Even the angels were, were embarrassed to be in the company of Usman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. People they say, Abu Bakr and Umar and Usman, and they roamed, they oppressed Ali. If they had oppressed Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, do you think Ali would have named his own children after Abu Bakr and Umar? When you name your children, you want to name them after someone special, someone noble, someone you hold close to your heart, your sheikh, your ustad, your maulana. Look at who? Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Look at after whom he named his children. Many so-called lovers of Ali. Even they won't know the names of the sons of Hazrat Ali, but we we'll tell them. We we'll tell them the names of the sons of Ali radiallahu anhu. Had 14 sons. The first one, Hassan, Hussein, he named one Abdullah, one Ubaidullah. How many is that? Then, because of his love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he named three of his sons Muhammad. Muhammad Akbar, Muhammad Awsat, Muhammad Asghar. And then, how many does that make? Four and three? Seven. Four he named others, one after his brother Jafar. Jafar owned Yahya Abbas. Seven and four makes? I'm sure you've all done some primary maths. Eleven. How many does that leave? Fourteen minus eleven is? Three. You know what he named them? One he named Abu Bakr. One he named Umar. One he named Usman. It is the sunnah of Ali radiallahu anhu to name your children Abu Bakr and Usman, Umar and Usman. And not just Ali. Hassan radiallahu ta'ala had number of sons. And when he came to name his sons, he named one Abu Bakr and one Umar. And Abu Bakr was by the side of Hussein radiallahu anhu when he was in Karbala. And not just Hassan, Hussein radiallahu ta'ala also named his son Abu Bakr and Umar. He had other sons, Ali and others, but Hussein radiallahu ta'ala named his sons Abu Bakr and Umar. Finally, one of Ali radiallahu anhu's sons, his name was Muhammad bin Hanafiya. He is also known as Muhammad Akbar. Muhammad bin Hanafiya, Imam Bukhari rahimahullah, has brought this narration in his collection in his Sahih. He says, Sa'altu an Abi an ayyun nasi khayrun ba'd al Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, I asked my father. Muhammad bin Hanafiya asks who? His father, who's his father? 
علی رضی اللہ عنہ ایو الناس خیر بعد النبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم and you know what علی said قال ابو بکر ابو بکر and then he said ثم من then who فقال عمر and then as علی said then عمر and then محمد بن حنفی said وخشیت ان يقول عثمان فقلت ثم انت and then he said, I was afraid if I ask him who then, then my father Ali would say Usman. So I said, oh father, after Abu Bakr and Umar, was it you? And Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, may Allah bless him. May Allah enlighten his grave. May Allah increase his status in Jannah and give him the fitting the reward that he deserved. He said, not me. Ma ana illa rajulun min al muslimin It wasn't me. I was an ordinary Muslim. Not that as Ali was an ordinary Muslim. He was a special man. He was very close as someone who deserves our love but also our love I deserved by Abu Bakr by Azza Umar by Azza Usman and anyone who was fortunate enough and to set his eyes on the beloved Prophet of Allah we pray to Allah may Allah grant us their love fill our hearts with love uh, for the Sahaba for the family of Rasulullah and for every movement as well